What's up guys, back with another video, and while I'm a day late and a dollar short on this topic, I figured I would go ahead and discuss what I think is actually wrong with the Creation Club for Fallout 4, and how I would go about fixing it. Now before we start, this isn't really meant to be a rant video, nor is it meant to be a video praising the Creation Club program. I must admit that in the past that I've made a few videos where I've talked about how awesome it would be to have new DLC content for Fallout 4. In fact, on some level, the prospect of Bethesda working with third-party contractors to put together new content for Fallout 4 or Skyrim seems like a pretty cool idea to me. However, with this said, I'm going to be very critical of the current implementation of the Bethesda Creation Club for Fallout 4, and if someone at Bethesda is somehow watching this video, just know that I do this out of love for your game. With all of this said, let's jump in and discuss. The main problem with the Creation Club is that it's a microtransaction system that offers content at a poor value to the consumer, and I think an important distinction to point out is that the product that you're actually buying are the Creation Club credits rather than the Creation Club content itself. And by not buying the content directly, you end up paying higher prices for things that should cost much less. And while the quality of each individual item may actually be very good, the problem is that the pricing of each individual piece of content is out of line with the pricing of Fallout 4's DLC content. As I'm sure many of you are aware, there are four different pricing tiers for the credits. For $7.99, you get 750 credits. For $14.99, you get $1,500. $24.99 gets you $3,000, and $39.99 gets you $5,500 credits. And on average, per dollar spent on Creation Club credits, you're getting roughly 113 credits per dollar spent. However, if you pay $7.99 or $14.99, you're getting more like 100 credits per dollar. So, I guess in a certain way, it's safe to say that per every 100 credits, you're spending a dollar. Now, if you visit the Creation Club page within Fallout 4 itself, you'll notice that the vast majority of items are priced around 200 to 400 credits. And given that 100 credits is roughly $1, you're spending anywhere from 2 to $4 on average per item that is being offered through the Creation Club. So, for example, maybe one gun costs $2, the next costs $4, maybe there's an item that's $3, and then, of course, you have the Hellfire Power Armor that costs $5. I think it's worth taking the time to actually compare this to some of Fallout 4's DLC. All of the Workshop DLCs for Fallout 4 cost $5 each, and while some Workshop DLCs like vault Workshop offered more content than Wasteland or Contraptions Workshop, all three of these pieces of content included 50 to 100 brand new assets that were not available in the base game, and the vault one in particular includes an entirely new area to explore, all for just $5. There's also the Automatron DLC, the Far Harbor DLC, and the Nuka World DLC, which are priced at $10, $25, and $20 respectively. All three of these DLCs contain a slew of brand new weapons, armors, quests, and both Far Harbor and Nuka World in particular contain a massive area for the player to explore. Arguably, Nuka World and Far Harbor are the best pieces of content for Fallout 4 because they are a great value proposition as you're getting the most bang for your buck, so to speak. The thing is, why would anyone buy the prototype Gauss Rifle when they could simply buy vault Tech Workshop and get a whole lot more stuff? And the same thing goes with the Hellfire Power Armor. While I will admit that it looks really cool, and I think the guy that did the work on it did a great job, why would I spend my money on that when I'm already able to get Automatron, which offers power armor, new weapons, the ability to customize your own robots, and it features its own story? While I suppose you could argue that comparing Automatron to the Hellfire power armor is unfair, let's look at items that are the same price. I mean, you have the vault Tech Workshop, compared to the Hellfire Power Armor, and the fact is, is that the vault Tech Workshop is just a better value than the Hellfire Power Armor is. Another thing that I think we need to discuss are mods. 
about a couple weeks back, Unoctium, who was responsible for the excellent XO2 Power Armor mod, recently released the XO3 Power Armor mod, which is meant to be the Hellfire Power Armor. And I find it funny that you can get the XO3 Power Armor mod for free while you have to pay $5 for Bethesda's official Hellfire Power Armor. And while it's true that console users may or may not have access to the XO3 Power Armor by Unoctium, you have to wonder if people are really going to pay out 500 Creation Club credits for Bethesda's version when again, you can get a version of the exact same item for free. This was an issue I foresaw back when the Creation Club was announced around E3 this year, because how are you going to convince anybody but PS4 owners to purchase this content, especially when PC and Xbox One users have access to external assets already? And on some level, Creation Club content is essentially serving the same functionality as mods, however the difference is that mods are free, while Creation Club content is not. By offering small things within their Creation Club, like individual weapons and armor, Bethesda is directly competing with the mod market. Not only can the mod community produce content at a far cheaper rate than Bethesda can, it can do so at a quality that rivals what Bethesda is offering. Again, why would you pay $5 for a power armor when you can get it for free? So you may be wondering, how would I improve the Creation Club? First, I'd either get rid of the credit system and allow people to pay directly, or allow the Creation Club credits to be a means of providing a discount while still allowing people to pay directly. And by allowing people to buy your content directly, you're going to greatly increase the quality and value proposition of the content produced. The higher quality of the items on your service, the better the reputation the Creation Club will have. Second, there should be a higher bar set for what is eligible to be sold on the Creation Club service. For example, instead of selling a single suit of power armor, maybe you would bundle multiple power armors and weapons together in the form of a weapons and armor pack. The fact is, modders can already make individual pieces of content at a reasonably high quality, and while there is a risk that the mod that's made doesn't even work, you can simply uninstall the mod if it doesn't work. Part of the appeal of a program like this should be to fund the development of bigger and badder pieces of content that an individual modder couldn't possibly create on their own, or that would take a team of modders an incredibly long time to produce. A payable expansion in the veins of something like Enderall is what's going to be successful for a platform like this, or even a DLC that is in line with either Far Harbor or Nuka World would be better than creating just a new gun that people can purchase. Ideally, you want the Creation Club to have a reputation for having high quality content, not to be just another pointless microtransaction system. Finally, I would put together a website complete with its own client software that allows you to easily install the content that you have for sale. Think of something like how the Nexus Mod Manager works, where you can simply visit the Nexus website on your computer or phone, you can literally click download, and the mod auto-installs on your platform of choice. And while I suppose a system like this may present some complications for the console versions, this system will be far better than how the creation Club is currently implemented. At the end of the day though, I suppose we'll see what happens with the Creation Club. My hope is that Bethesda will turn this thing around and turn it into something that's really awesome and is something that people can be really excited about. But even if they don't do anything and decide to keep things exactly as they are, I would still like to see this program last longer than the paid Steam Workshop that was announced for Skyrim a couple years back. Ultimately, I do think that the market will determine what's going to be popular, and if the market wants this platform in its current state, you know what, great. But if they don't, then I think we're going to see the Creation Club go away, or hopefully we'll see it changed into something that's far better than it currently is. But alright guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like, and let me know what you think about the Creation Club. Um, do you like how it's being done so far, or do you think it could greatly improve, or do you just not want to see it at all? 
let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, like this video if you liked it, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.